Simplicity and Gale Force Esports have each earned themselves one victory so far in this best of five, which means we are all tied up heading into game three because that's how the math works. It's been a great series so far. We've had geometry, we've had math now. Just we'll don't hit me with the calculus. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I thought that's so funny. Who, in the, who in the game would do calculus? Hmm. Gaslo. Definitely Gaslo. Gaslo. All right, well, we'll see if we get a Gaslo on Sky Temple because that's where our third game takes place. Gale Force Esports choosing Sky. Man, it is, um, it's so cool and different and like sort of overwhelming to like see all these different changes, right? Hero preferences for different teams because the rosters are different. Battleground preferences because some shot colors are different. Not Gale Force, but sort of. It's just like a, it's cool to get to learn along with you guys. That's all, that's all I'm saying. I'm it excited. Is. I. I'm thinking Sky Temple. I'm thinking Zuna's been twice on Gray Man. I would love to see a Tracer Zuna, depending on the draft. It's something that I instantly think about. I don't know why. I just really want to see a Tracer pick. Okay. Earlier, there was a Tracer in Europe. If Noticeably, Zuna playing it? No. Then it's not a Zuna, or it's not a Tracer. Noticeably, without Cassadar. I know. What about a Biggie Tracer, though? Biggie? Also I, good. There's a lot. And then, will we see globals? Potentially Zagara. I doubt it. You keep, kid, you're but just gonna keep saying false dad. <laughs> My second most played hero might be Zagara. Okay. Right after Sylvanas, who pretty decent in this patch with position. <clears throat> but you know, we've Look. got a different meta here in HGC. Look, I should just we should just set some ground rules right here. I have endured. So many times talking about Feel the Heat. Just so many times, right? I don't know if I can handle hearing that many times about Zagara or Possession or the Butcher. Don't blame me with, <laughs> because Zagara was what B Kid really, really looked good on he in did, phase two. He did. Not my fault. Not my fault. Ooh, Zeratul. Zeratul ban. I don't know how many, I mean, I'm sure, you know, if you're watching streams and stuff that are out there, we know Zeratul's been reworked. Mm -hmm. And the stealth changes are obviously different. Zeratul's pretty good right now. And I think that the pros recognize that. And there's a lot of playmaking potential. This is one of Zeratul's better maps. Hanzo, ETC, or Lucio. I was wondering which one of those that would be. Turns out it's Hanzo. With Scatter Arrow and the way that the temples are set up, I'm betting you can probably get a whole lot of damage done with those. If you can get on to a boss, I mean, depending on what you pick at level four, obviously, mm -hmm. it's kind of been one of the debatable things on what the build we would see. We've seen more of a Q build style in our first early games, especially in Europe as well. We're still waiting, will we see that boss control? We didn't see it on Cursed. You know, potentially if we get, well, of course, BOE's banned in the series, but ETC Great Main this time for Gale Force. ETC definitely high priority and with Fury being one of the most dominant NA ETC players in Grey Main style, this is old school Gale Force when they were back together. I want to see that aggression. I, I want to see that aggression from this team. Yeah, definitely two aggressive picks for Gale Force Esports so far, and it leaves them open still for a lot of different ways of playing. There is a possibility in having B Kid now on the team. B Kid used to be a uh, the tank player for a long time. Maybe they try to pair Tyrael along with this Grey Main. Uh, Sanctification also could potentially help out with the Mosh Pit if they want to go that way, or get the global off of ETC having stage dive. But Tyrael also would give some of that boss control to Gale Force Esports too. Tyrael should be noted. It's not the reworked Tyrael yet. We're still playing um, with the old Tyrael. That'll come in soon. New Tyrael has Holy Ground a little earlier, which still. Scared. Still not my cast aside, you know. I miss, I miss my cast aside. <laughs> Simplicity. I feel like they might prioritize a, a warrior early. This was the scariest thing. If you're on the other side, Arthas is there with Icebound Fortitude. We don't see a lot of Arthas play from King Caffeine. Of course, Murden. We've already talked about it, but with ETC trying to get that slide onto somebody, Murden's kind of that one that has some of the highest survivability because his health pool is so high. So getting that does make the aggression a little less. I guess from the side of Gale Force in terms of is this a killable target? 
maybe if they go Curse Bolt level 10, it makes it possible. But then once you get past 13 and 16 with Murden, it's really hard to take him down with just that blow up. You're going to need a lot more than Grey Man. Yeah, he was having a fun time just barely surviving several times until finally B Kid took him out last game. King Caffeine has loved his Murden for a long time. It also brings back Air Hose to Haka, who they worked out really well for them and their aggression and their targeting um, in game Ooh. one. Tracer ban, Abathur ban. It opens the door. Four. I didn't want to say it. For death. For death. I had a, I got a feeling that Gale Force on that last slot might fall back to a false stat again. Okay. To give them that global. Greymane, of course, can be flexed between Udall and Biggie. I think it'll be more along the lines of Biggie. I'd like to see Biggie on Greymane. And then they get that global to match the Dahaka. Obviously, global high priority on Sky Temple with the way everything works here. Skimple, uh, Sky, Sky Temple, the temples in one area. Skimple. Skimples, you know, the Skimples. Don't act like you don't know it. What about Simplicity picking up Falstad? Hosty. Yeah, it's Hosty. Uh, gives boss control. A disengage versus a um, speed boosted mouth ale who's getting on you. I'll caution against it. Hanzo okay. has really good burst damage if he's hitting. But when you run double global, we saw this a lot from Gale Force last year, you tend to miss a little bit more of the team fight, a little bit more of the sustain that you have. Hanzo can get in there. If he's landing skill shots, it's good sustain depending on the build. You could have the, the cooldown reduction, things like that. I, I like that they're adding a, a different element to their damage, but they're also <laughs> picking up the bright wing. My heart! <laughs> Wait, but K1 Pro's not going to be playing Jaina, right? I know. But K1 Pro bright wing? <laughs> I was, I'm so conflicted right now. I was reminiscing just the other day on the the Zuna Ring of Frost Dragonshire bottom right fort. You where, were. Oh my! It was beautiful to watch. I feel like he's on the Jaina train. All right. Well, you know, if I can't see K1 Pro play Jaina, Zuna's pretty cool, and K1 Pro bright wing. <laughs> I'm pretty pumped. Last pick for Gale Force. Is it the fall stat that Jay Howe recommended? With Jaina there, it makes fall stat a little bit scarier. You do have the boss control, you do have the global, but if he gets caught out in any form or fashion, he's in trouble. Do you find somebody with a bit more survivability? Nah, they go with fall stat. I, I'm okay with that. I like it a lot. It gives them the global, especially against double global. You don't want to get caught out. You could see potential double global ganks coming in a 1v1 easily turns into a 3v1. It also gives you that protection, as you said, on the boss. So I'm okay with that. You'd all back there. Biggie, of course, on the gray main. So I like it. I like their draft. Now, what do you think of the Jaina for simplicity? Jaina and you've got a solo support bright wing for Jaina and Hanzo. However, there's the double warrior that should be able to take care of themselves. Murden and Dahaka, very tanky. Double warrior there, and you have the Emerald win in case mm -hmm. you see B Kid come in on the mouth ale. And then you don't necessarily have to worry about a hyper aggressive team coming in. The one thing you do have to worry about, Brightwing's going to have to be careful with trying to make sure that she has the uh, Emerald win or the Polymorph available for the ETC. Could see the Mosh Pit this game, depending. And there's not a lot of interrupts. Otherwise, if you're in the melee, you're generally going to get caught in the slide. So it is something you'll have to be careful of. Yeah, potentially it forces Murden and Dahaka to try to stay more separated. Then maybe you have the isolation and, and Stormball off from the side. Somebody who can make sure to take care of that if you have Brightwing on Malthale duty too, trying to polymorph him so he can't get into a better position once he goes into Tormented Souls. Game three is ready, so let's get into it. We're tied 1-1 for the game. As expected, Zuna will be on Jaina, which is something very much we can look forward to. K1 Pro putting the sprays down on Gilly's favorite hero, Brightwing. Hosty, of course, on Hanzo. King Caffeine on Murden. And Urho rounding it out there on Dahaka. For Gale Force, big impact. We're playing Greymane. After that, Michael Udall on his false stat. Per usual, B Kid. Back on Mouthale, played a great Mouthale earlier in this series. Fury playing ETC and Akaface playing Lucio. The vision ever so important. With the amount of globals here, 
generally we'll see the, the contest here over things. It's not that big of a deal when you can just instantly dig down. You can fly down. And it looks like Gale Force will keep control of the eye for the time being. Yeah, I wonder how the laning setup would go for Gale Force if they wanted to put Falstad down in the bottom, knowing that it would be versus Tahaka, might make it uh, a bit scarier for him. But knowing that Tahaka's down there, Gale Force puts Malthiel down there. Malthiel can uh, really put the hurt onto a Tahaka solo laner using that Reaper's Mark. See B kids start to get more aggro up in the face of Airho trying to push those waves in and maybe even do some tower damage. Good cocktail in response there by Biggie. It's going to take a bit of damage. He's going to go ahead and tap early on. And, you know, you talk about Malthale and Falstad. Both of them can easily win that lane against Dahaka. Malthale tends to have a bit more control over that. It looks like they're going to use Falstad in the top lane while the rest of the team comes down, finishes the siege camp pretty early. And again, camp prioritization seems to be a lot different now that we have the objective changes. Just the timing alone has teams making different rotations, different decisions throughout the game. Siege Giants are picked up on the bottom. I think Gale Force is already going for the Knights. Yeah, think about it. Before on Sky Temple, you would see that focus up and then immediately going down and getting uh, the Giants oh, eventually. No wow, that's so rip. And a Fury saving the day. b Kid <laughs> should not have lived there. He got one last soul rip, and they're walking. It's like the cool guy walking away from the fire, <laughs> except dude had a, he had a fire extinguisher. He's like, no, actually, I'm living through this. Sorry. And then you see Malthiel face with the sunglasses <laughs> drop down. Deal with it. Perfect. But yeah, it is it's just so different to see the camp timings that you have the Giants before the first phase, even getting the Bruisers before the first phase. That traditionally, you would see that be picked up for the first time right before the second phase, down at the bottom. Again, learning alongside with you guys. Biggie and Akaface here are going to get pushed back from the members of Simplicity, but not before this gets some damage done to the top. Potentially, now we'll see a priority on the top temple from GFE because of this damage they've been able to do. Well, Gilly, we've seen different builds so far. Hanzo, mm -hmm. finally seeing the scatter shot build. Obviously, mm -hmm. level one, you're going to be trying to hit some heroes, get some damage there. And then level four, getting that bonus damage towards everybody but heroes. So, different build for a different map. See how it works out. Yeah, that level four does make you just a murking machine as Hanzo, being able to take them out fast. The simple geometry, uh, what do you think reasoning wise, why we're seeing it here for the first time? Is it because of how temples are set up in general? They have a lot of different walls that you're able to guarantee get those multiple arrow hits on a single hero to be able to pick up those stacks? It, it's a really good question because when you look at Sky Temple, you don't necessarily see the same structure style set up. It's very open. The objective areas do have the surrounding structures, mm -hmm. but it's very different. I think when we start to look towards the bottom temple in particular, it's prime opportunity to stack that up, get value. Yeah. And then you also look around the boss and the siege giants. Things like that, I think, are going to have higher priority when we look towards the bottom half of the map more as opposed to the top as we get a good look at the middle area here. The structures there are very difficult. Your geometry better be on point. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on how the stacking of that goes, as especially as you continue on toward the likely level 16 track from this, which would be uh, being able to have the piercing arrows. Because the more that those scatter arrows bounce, the more targets that they can pierce through. And that's when they start to chunk people and you have that AOE damage. You don't know, keeping an eye on things on the bottom, as we saw Jane and Dahaka clearing up the siege camp. But in the top, this top is being pushed. The fort is going down. Caffeine getting a bit of damage in, but taking a bit in return. It's going to be a fort down. And incrementally, this is Gale Force doing what I like to see them do, is to get every inch that they can, stretch that. Sometimes it's not about just making the big plays. It's about getting the small increments of experience, control on the map, and then eventually pushing that lead so far so good, but we've got ourselves a pretty even game. Yeah, swapping out in the solo laner now that Falstad has Boomerang, Michael Hudal can uh, be in the solo lane versus Airho, and that allows for the global to be there so he can join with the team and Malthiel to stick closer to the rest of the team. Also, ETC posturing up in top may run
run into some trouble here, Stormbolt. Does power slide through the Blizzard, but does take some ability damage from that. What are we looking at? Jaina's still a ways off from being able to get improved Ice Block, but that will... I wanted to mention that that'll be another thing to help with the sustainability of Simplicity and those two backliners, knowing that they just have the Brightwing for protection. Sometimes we'll see the Q build at one getting that extra range. We see, uh, excuse me, Zuna going into the Globe build, which gives you that per that extra 10% damage. And with the Globe changes, makes it a little bit easier. Progress sitting at 11 out of 20 right now, make that a bit easier. Getting that burst damage, that extra percent damage, maybe even go that vulnerability at 16 and really go blow up style that definitely fits Zuna's playstyle. Do you feel like this is going to be Ring of Frost for Jaina? I have seen or, or heard that Water Elemental, some people are playing with it. Yeah, I think one of the biggest reasons why I heard Dunk Train talking about this on stream the other day is that we're in a very mobile meta. It's gotten more mobile from an already mobile meta. You talk about Lucio being there with the movement speed, mm -hmm. Greymane, good mobility, Falstad being able to barrel roll away. It could potentially come out with that Water Elemental. Temples started in the bottom. Simplicity with the claim. Gale Force Esports keeping their globals now that they have ETC up in the top for now, though he is <laughs> going to get stunned as he power slid in, but it doesn't matter. He still will be able to aid in the deletion of Jaina, even as the Dragon's Arrows hope to stop that too. Tormented Souls comes out from B Kid. No further victims claimed by Gale Force Esports, but they did what they intended. They did get a kill. Instantly picked that water elemental that came in, and it was met with a power slide to the. F it's just like two trains colliding as he just kind of got stuck there as he already hit somebody else. Looked good in action, but bot lane, bot temple, right now in control for Gale Force. He was in the position that he needed to be in. The power slide did its job. It did do its he job. He still was. Maybe even. Because he didn't go through, he was still body blocking. So maybe even being happy. Hey, I'm cool with this. Yeah, this is a fine place to be stopped. We'll just go ahead and take out your Jaina. Thank you very much. We don't have Echo Petal, do we? Nope. Yeah. Pinball Wizard. Getting, I thought the damage was there. I was it was like, fast. Wait a minute. Like, that was some good burst damage. So coupling that together, working really well for ETC. Here in North America, we like to call that a good old fashioned super deletion. Super deleted. B Kid with the juke so far, the power slide over. B Kid trying to get out of there. Caffeine going in. And we're going to see the gust create some space by Michael Udall. B Kid will be able to walk away. Nice save there. Yeah, really well done from that, too. Fury did what he could with the peels as well, but then was hit in the face with the isolation. But the gust was necessary, and it did its job. Mercenary Camp's up in the top fighting. The next phase is going to be top and bottom for a split. Potentially, this sets up one team to be able to look at the boss if they're able to claim that bottom one. But uh, Simplicity, knowing this, are just going to start that earlier. But it's Gale Force who's closer to 13. They're closer to 13, and without Mighty Gust, this is a play that Simplicity feels okay with making, but the longer this draws out, the more that comes on cooldown, and False that's flying on the backside right now does not have that mighty gust in that. Ten seconds. Yeah, this is a bad spot. I, Gale Force, no way able to contest, but they're oh. looking to go back in. Yeah, the drag pulled Fury in. He almost got hit by the stun. Now Michael Udall separated from everyone else in Gale Force. He will undoubtedly uh. gust everyone away. Airho gets into the bush, gets the movement speed advantage, but a barrel roll out. Voids isolation. The chase is real slow from the <laughs> Hammering. Oh, oh, oh. Mike is still living in this. Does he have his e? Oh, this movement speed. He's getting in the bush. He gets that movement He's speed. He's in the minions. Close. He's going to be fine. The minions are. Oh! oh. Michael Udall says, Dahaka, I recognize that you get that bonus movement speed in that bush, but I've got something called hammering that will slow you down. The chase in vain baits out the isolation as well. Michael Udall lives another day. Probably doesn't deserve to, but he made it. Excellent decision making from Simplicity. They and willingness to fight without the 13 talent here. It's not the biggest deal for them there, and making sure that they were able to get that boss so that that wasn't a problem during the temple phase two catches them up. Although they do lose Air Ho from the double global of Falstad and ETC. That's almost a good thing that he died when he did. Because if Brightwing makes it in there, Emerald Wind is available, but I don't think it would necessarily save 
to Haka there and would have maybe ended up costing his own life. So I think that might have been a little bit of a blessing. K1 Pro, again, new to the support role in terms of maining support. I'm not saying that was a bad call. I'm just saying that that's a learning experience. No matter which way you look at it, it gives you that decision making for future instances. No, there is definitely a long amount of time where you play Brightwing and you believe that you can save just about anybody as a Brightwing. Nice. Oh, the double Stormbolt. That's Quick sick. kill on Greymane. That is killer combo as the the water elemental just continues to chase. Got the slowdown there, which really helps set things up. And then once the stun came in, the blizzard came down. Good synergy from Simplicity there. Gives them a tower in return, gives them a little bit of a push, and gets them back into this game a little bit. Yeah, Simplicity does need to keep going off of this, though. They have been, they lost their global, which lost a lot of presence in the top lane. Michael Udall has done a lot with that in that time, even in losing Greymane in the bottom lane. So they need to be continuing to make these decisive uh, decisions that do benefit them in some way so that they can make sure to get back to 16 and continue uh, that was a stay? blind. Wow. They know Zuna. what is up. Zuna goes down. They're looking for Hosty on the backside. Udall coming in. Gilly, that was a blind stage dive. I do not think that they had vision on that. They are willing to commit Hosty in trouble. K1 Pro in trouble. B Kid gets the. Well, they've got an ice block for a second. Yeah, He's yeah. going to go down. Mm. This is the Gale Force that I like to see. These decisions are very different this year versus last. That is undeniable a risky call. But it worked. It paid off, and it was awesome. I, I want to go back and watch the replay on that, because I am pretty sure they did not have clear vision on that camp. That is gutsy. I mean, yes, they probably knew where they were going, right. but to fully commit, that is killer call. And just as Simplicity had done something that started to get them back in the game, they Gale Force turns right around and does the same thing. They get in, they separate the team. K1 Pro waffles for a second, trying to figure out if he can save Hosty. Hosty gets on the other side of the Emerald Wind. And from there, lots was yeah, lost. There's no is. vision. No. There is no vision. So just ETC at first, then Malthiel comes in too. Aka's trying to join up, and False Out, of course, joins in as well. So well done. They go around off the other side. Dude, give me that's that's play of the game for me right there. Emerald win, of course, going out. There we go. There we go. The good thing for simplicity right now, Gilly, is that it's a single temple phase. And Gale Force has no need to really risk a fight. They're creating opportunities with their double global falls that ETC. You can see them on the mini map. They'll come in if needed. But I don't think this is something Gale Force has to force. They have a little bit of damage. There's the stage dive in. Calf, Stormbolt on return. Door presses out, and that was a lot of stuns, a lot of slows. No one can stop Death Gets. B-Kid still over up in, uh, even though uh, there was the Emerald Wind trying to push everyone back. But Malthiel ends up getting isolated enough away that Simplicity are able to take him down and blow him up on top of the rest of the team. Power slide. Oh, man. Oh, does he get away? Zuno went the root on already chilled talents. And of course, with that water elemental there, that's when he ended up getting the root. That's a scary moment. And then Lucio's like, hey, listen, I got this thing. I'm going to amp it up a little bit. Come with me. You got a little bit of movement speed. Let's go to a uh, rock star. And uh, I guess we'll say an EDM guy hanging out. Who says music can't collaborate? Really cool simplicity is not showing on this temple. They want to head down and see if they can get the boss. There is Look Mighty Gust. Damage. There's no Emerald Wind for 10 seconds. Oh. I know, the Scatter Arrow is just ridiculous. It is insanely It is so strong. ridiculous at this boss point. Hosty, okay. He's just going to vault on out of there. Emerald Wind and Mighty Gust are both up. Fury with the aggressive power slide in. King Caffeine is standing on the point. The face melt is there, but Fury taking so much damage. The Mighty Gust will save him, but they no longer have this for boss control. Emerald Wind oh. is out. They are going in. They go right back on the point. Emerald Wind was out before the boss. This boss will be stolen by 
scale force esports, but how much do they lose in the process? Oh, it Zuna. looks like just enough. They lose two, but they blow up Zuna. Now K1 Pro is gonna face shift on out just in time, but it's not exactly oh. to safety. Yeah, he didn't really go very oh, far. Let's find hosty. ourselves a hosty, but Michael Yudo goes down. Oh, hosty trying to make the plays. The minion might be the MVP there. This is a bloodbath back and forth. The boss is pushing bottom. K1 Pro is gonna do everything he can to survive for the moment, but that is four members that went down on the side of Simplicity. So what is left? The delay of the temple means there's just a few shots in the top that has taken some damage. We're gonna look at this again. So the Emerald Wind and the Gust, the Gust had to go out there, and then Emerald Wind is used at the same time, knowing that they, they see the Cursed Bullet come out and the damage from that. They're able to barrel roll back onto the point, get back in, ending up losing, but stealing the boss. Zuna got super stunned by that boss, by the way and uh, ended up getting deleted right after. The boss gets through the bottom wall, gets through about half of the bottom keep. And I think for what it's worth right now, Simplicity not terribly far behind. They still have all of their keep standing and technically are still very much in this game despite being down nine kills to five. Yeah, there is a definite common trend that's happening in this series between these two teams. Gale Force is getting ahead in the game. They have the faster rotations, they're making in insane but awesome invades on camps. Simplicity won off of a team fight in game one. It just didn't have for them, happen for them in the last game. Let's see if they can get 20 and make it happen here and go up two games in the series. This is where I'd like to see Gale Force take advantage of their 20, take advantage of the spell armor they get from this camp, take the keep down and walk out. If you have a clear opportunity, take it but I don't think that they necessarily need to force this. The next temple phase, Gilly, double temple phase, and at this point, you can pretty much choke the enemy team out with your global, stay on one of those. It's up to Simplicity now to take a fight, to force the action. And Guild Force right now, as much as we've complimented them being aggressive, especially late game, not letting off the gas, this is one of those maps where you can actually just choke your opponent out. So we'll see the approach. Does Guild Force play a little bit smart? Do they keep up the aggression? There's a lot to be said about the last few minutes of this game here. Checking out the Storm Tier talents, because there is a lot going on. ETC is holding his level 20, which is standard to see from an ETC, but so is Falstad, knowing that Wind Tunnel might be a possibility from this if they need it from there. He also has some other options, Epic Mount if he needs, just to fly as fast as he can. The other side, Winter Mute, that Water Elemental is going to be doing a lot more now, being able to mirror the uh, abilities and continuous winds locked in from Brightwing, having those extra couple of pulses for more of the zone control. This game really has felt like a Mighty Gust versus oh. Emerald Wind. Yeah, that's that's Murden. Dragon Arrow and the drag. Ooh. B Kid's in trouble. B Kid's in a lot of B trouble. B Kid's gone. They got aggressive, Gillian. They got punished for it. And Simplicity is the prime team that will do that to you. And now a five versus four Look in favor of Simplicity. A deep stock in, but the drag doesn't connect. Simplicity are doing everything they can to stop Gale Force from connecting back up with Malthiel. He's going to get there, but not in time. Greyman is gone. Sick play is being made. Falstad is going to get every ounce of temple shots that he can. I hate to say it, but trying to get onto that Muradin, it's just not going to happen. They didn't get the blow up, but they've got Hosty now. And all of a sudden, this is turning around. Zuna in trouble on the backside. We've got the Tormented Souls out. The autos are going to land. And the blink over by Fury. A clutch play there with that level 20 securing the kill. What is happening right now? Simplicity split up and Gale Force just made the call. They oh. made a call, they stuck to it, they got together, and they got three kills from that. Now they have taken over both of the temples, back to business for Gale Force as they bring down the remaining keeps for Simplicity. They gave them a business in that last team fight. They lose one member, they're like, you know what, we're fine with this. It's fine. They go in and they take that fight. Who is this team? Gale Force, show me some more as you take down the core here. Temple shots are doing core damage. Three members of Simplicity down. Gale, Gale Force looking strong in the series. Really, really cool stuff from Gale Force Esports. Three games in a row, they have been making the right rotations, being really aggressive, making blind stage dives into camps. 
all in the name of being in control. They are controlling these games. Fury, look, if we're making highlight clips, I don't really know what would have happened, but Fury's chasing. There's a few autos going on to Lucio, uh, or from Lucio onto Murden as he dwarf tosses over. Fury blinks over the wall and gets that kill. I mean, that is a sick play. That is just snap reaction. Maybe Murden lives, maybe he doesn't. Maybe it affects the outcome, maybe it doesn't. But this is a focused team that is making plays on every roll right now. I'm loving it. Yeah. I'm loving it. They are doing super well. And it's awesome to see Fury and B-Kid on the front line together. We talked about it. B-Kid replaced Fury on Gale Force Esports after Fury <laughs> was taken off of the team. So now see them joined up together making plays up in front. It is pretty dope. Now I want to talk about simplicity. They have been, it feels like they've had to play from behind quite a bit. Not super far behind though. They're they're not doing something where they get so far behind, like maybe we'd see from B-Step before and they have to make a miracle play very late in the game. It's just that these little advantages here and there are being taken by Gale Force, that simplicity starts to fall behind in structures and then they have to make more and more riskier plays. What would you like to see different from them potentially? The riskier plays also I think comes to a riskier draft. The Jaina pick obviously is not necessarily what we would consider meta, but it's not necessarily a bad pick, but it's a I want to kill people, my name is Zuna type pick, which is fine. And he does make plays on that. We have saw it throughout last year. We've seen some Jaina changes, which make her, I think, a little bit more effective. But when it comes to the composition, the opportunities that they took, it didn't necessarily mirror exactly the play style and the map. Again, for me, when it came to the Hanzo and Jaina pick, I would have liked to see maybe an auto attack style hero, something with some sustained damage with the blow up potential. Instead, they opted for the ultimate blow up potential in Jaina. It didn't quite have the effect that he wanted and uh, they got punished for it. So I don't think it was necessarily bad. I just think it might not have been as optimal, but maybe that's just their play style. I'd also say that the Brightwing seemed to cause difficulty for them. Um, a lot of times it, things did fall down to, to K1 Pro needing to hit a good Emerald win to separate away once everyone started to come in from Gale Force Esports. And when you've got inevitable end at 13 for Malthiel, he can get around that. One time he did get blown up because he was <laughs> separated <laughs> from that, but he can get away from that. We saw Falstad be able to barrel roll in in a way so that he could still get there it just didn't really seem to have the uh, breath like taking a breath and then re-engaging the way that maybe they were hoping for and that does put simplicity down uh, two games to Gale Force Esports so far let's check in and see what you guys are saying about the series so far you can always tweet using the hashtag HGC this is from who fit to the great escape from Michael Udall as Falstad hashtag HGC hashtag not even close I want to know who out there is clipping that fury <laughs> Blind stage dive and then Falstad coming in with the gust to get the kill. And then that right there was a big turning point in that game. Yes. Yeah, because they had just lost one or two people. Um, they had been pushed back in the bottom lane. And instead of just saying, we'll play for the next, next objective phase. We'll wait until the next temple phase and then we'll get in a fight. No. As soon as they were back up, immediately going in. B-Kid setting up in advance too. He had to start <laughs> rotating in before that too. They were just ready to go. They knew the pathing, right? It's yeah. not like it's just a, a blind call, but it, it happened. And I think we actually have a replay uh, available from that last game that was one of the things that I think we definitely need to highlight with this team. Again, <laughs> it, it, can we pause this? Like, there's no vision. <laughs> there is none. The mouth L that you see at the top right near the score, that is all that you have. They probably saw, okay, they're pathing through here. They're probably going to siege camp. Mm -hmm. There's no more bold call than that, Gilly. I mean, they don't even get the siege giant, but false that, of course, coming in. Nice gust. That is... Th Tell me at any point last year where you think Gale Force would have made that call. Hostie's like, oh, this is not the <laughs> way that I wanted to go. It was awesome. And that wasn't the only time that Gale Force made this kind of awesome play, even in that game. Think about after they lost Greymane, <laughs> just went There's to the no mid temple. Way. And B Kid was just, he was in. There was no hesitation on the call. Tormented Souls in on top of everybody. They kill Zuna again. Just so refreshing to see the community.